Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Hello, I'm Jessica, and I'm sitting here with... Legislator Josh Lafazan. And we are going to turn, turn the, the page. page. <laughs> very good. Welcome, Josh. Thank you very much for having me. It's an honor to be here. So I'm calling this episode Syosset's Own because you really are Syosset's Own. Um, you know, I've, I've been a librarian here for 16 years. Mm-hmm. So I remember, you know, your family and hearing... Um, about the beginning of your career, and it's just so it's so wonderful to see Syosset's own pushing so hard and you know working so hard and so far. Well, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you. <laughs> Sixteen years here, people. I feel sometimes take for granted the just the breadth of program and and the sheer scope of what this library does and how special we are in Syosset to have such a crown jewel. So 16 years, thank you, because our libraries are the crown jewels of our communities. And I, I take being Syosset's own, I take that seriously <laughs> because uh, this is a community that made me and has given me everything. And I had my first job refereeing in the Syosset Soccer League. And I wow! went to Walt Whitman and HBT in the high school and I was senior class president, but I my career in public service started in 2001 in first grade in student government. So this, <laughs> this community has made me, and uh, you don't forget those who, who, who made you who you are. No. Uh, and, and I have a special appreciation for this community, and I always will. That's wonderful. Um, and thank you so much for the compliment about our library. We take a lot of pride in, sure. you know, what we do in our resources, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, I appreciate, um, you know, your, your compliment. We all do. So would you like to tell me beyond first grade when you sure. first did you run now did you run for student council president in first grade? So first grade I was the uh class representative, Miss Weiss class in Walt Whitman. <laughs> I remember it. it was a tough election. And uh, that was my foray into public service. And I Excellent. say that in all sincerity because I fell in love with the concept that I could use my voice to lift up the voices of my peers. Now obviously the magnitude of the issues has changed from Big sales in school place. Now I, I focus on public safety, uh, you know, and, and, and the opioid epidemic. But um, that ability to build a coalition and to use my voice again to lift up the voices of my peers, I fell in love with that, uh, and I knew it's what I wanted to do for my life. That's really fantastic. I know. Um, I remember our first student body elections, and mm-hmm. um, it's almost, uh, I think, um, also a foray into public speaking because I remember yes. some of my peers doing speeches. Yes, and I had to, you know, in first grade, you had to get out there and speak in front of the class. And it's funny because <laughs> you fast forward from two thousand one to two thousand twelve. Uh, I was senior class president at Syosset High School, and you know, you had to give a televised speech to the entire grade uh, about your plans and your vision for the class and um if it wasn't for the preparation that i got in student government and of course i was uh, a participant on the forensic speech and debate team now i know you know uh, yes. aside from having an amazing library we have a world-class school district yes we do we have, and the uh, forensic speech and debate team is nationally renowned is that um that's still run by is it lydia yeah, esslinger Miss, Miss, Miss 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 yes yes, yes. Who, who is is just a a guru of oration yeah she is and, very um, very good I, I you know again i you know when it's to be back here and, and to reflect on where i am in life because of this community again in in what other school district but i asked it, do you have somebody with the depth of knowledge that Miss esslinger has and the ability to translate that knowledge into action on behalf of her students, uh, I would not be uh, the persuasive speaker I am, and I would not be the confident speaker I am without forensic speech and debates. So now you look at whether it was student government or it was forensics, would I have gotten elected without those two experiences? I don't know. And so, so again, how lucky am I and how lucky yeah. are we that to grow up in the greatest community on earth, a safe community and a community where knowledge is at your fingertips, whether in the schoolhouse or mm-hmm. in the library, it's just... Uh, I go around the community and, and I, I'm consistently saying thank you um, because it's not easy to live here and people pay a lot to live here and they give back 
Yes. Right? Whether it's the basketball coaches or in a couple of weeks we're going to have the holiday lighting spectacular that the Chamber of Commerce puts on. Oh, nice. Or the fire department goes out and, yes. you know, with the Santa outfit yes. every street. <laughs> There's so many people who go out of their way every single day to make this place it is, you know, the place it is. And, yes. And uh, it's my job to continue to remind people that um, – it's important to give back because it's what makes, you know, a community without stakeholders bringing us together is just a group of streets. That's a very well put, um, that's a very well put statement. I absolutely agree with you. So, so f- fast forward to um, when you first decided to run for school board. Sure. I know this was uh, 2011, right? Yes. It was the beginning of my senior year. And uh, I always knew I had a love of politics and foreign affairs. Again, this was spearheaded by my experience in forensic speech and debate. And um, we had a superintendent in Syosset who Mm -hmm. was well-known, was collecting a pay package of well over half a million dollars. And uh, there was ire in the community because people were, were... exhausted mm-hmm. about a being embarrassed by newsday that we were on the front page of newsday for all the wrong reasons but b they felt that the school board wasn't truly representative of the community because mm-hmm. uh, as we know from school board governance a school board employs a superintendent and a school board is are the reps of the people right so when the people feel their voices aren't being heard or their ideas aren't being enacted that's a problem right it's a, it's a fundamental breakdown of local government so um people were uh, quite frankly, hesitant to run. And again, it's it's difficult because when you have kids in the school district and you you you're, you live in the community, you know. So so to me, at eighteen, you know, I had nothing to lose, right? I was eighteen. I was senior class president. And right. I decided that that who better to know what programs worked and didn't work than someone who was in those programs for the last thirteen years? Right. Who better right. to know to have a pulse on the community than somebody who, again, I was refereeing in Syosset soccer and Syosset basketball. I lived in the community my entire life. I'm in touch with the student body. Um, Nine 18-year-olds on a school board, people would turn their heads. One 18-year-old with new ideas and a fresh perspective and an ability to think outside the box, that was a really reasonable stakeholder because every demographic, every demographic in society should have a representative. Yeah. Especially 6,000 kids in the school. So I decided I was going to run. And again, I had no institutional knowledge. Uh, you know, I don't come from a political family. And people right. ask me all the time, uh, you know, do you come from a political family? Because I've had to learn all of this on the fly. Right. Um, I got together with my buddy Miles, who was my campaign manager. <laughs> and we just got a couple of kids and we just knocked doors every day after school. Right. We had no data or no, you know, big money behind us. We just... We were a, a bunch of kids. Your who, first canvassing right, experience. That, that was it. With yes. No, no data of who voted. And who, we didn't know how to do that. We just knocked on every door. Right, Hi, right. My name is Josh Lafazan. I'm senior class president. And I want to make a difference in this community. And I'm asking for your vote. And something magical happened. It was that door after door after door, people said, you're the first person that's ever knocked on my door. It does It does make an impression. Yeah. It really does. Well, I think it highlights and, and it underscores a commitment to the job because I always say you campaign like you govern, mm-hmm. right? And I campaign with tenacity mm-hmm. and, and, and ferocity, and that's how I govern every single day is I wake right. up and say, what can I do to make this community great right uh, and 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 to continue the work and that you know because we stand on the shoulders of giants like judy jacobs right right who right my my idol and, and a mentor judy, she was fantastic and i, I and re- a library user re- oh i know that and <laughs> I, I know that because i i met her in 1999 when she visited my kindergarten class at Walt Whitman. oh wow and i remember that ever since because i i want to be my generation's judy Somebody who was revered by both sides of the aisle and somebody who is no nonsense and gets the work done on behalf of the people. And again, I represent half of her old district. So, you know, we, we stand on, again, the shoulders of, of these giants, right? And, and, and how many people before me that I didn't even know that, that, that served on our school boards in the 70s and the 80s. So we right, right. be in the position to get a blue ribbon. And how many people work on, you know, I know the current trustees on this library and helped go through the renovation so we yeah. can have a world-class library here yeah. where, where regardless of socioeconomic status, regardless of where you live in the community, you can come here and have access to world-class research and academia. Where else can you do that? So again, I, st- I stand on the shoulders <laughs> of these giants and I hope that one day uh, people will want to continue the work that I'm doing. I think that is um, 
a wonderful call to service for, Mm -hmm. you know, anybody who's even thinking about it. Um, At the time, you were, were you the youngest uh, to ever run for? Well, the youngest in Sayasa, one of the, one of the youngest statewide. I know Tom Tom DiNapoli, who's the state comptroller, is one of my closest mentors. We often joke about who was youngest and uh, (laughs) I, you know, I guess he's the state comptroller, so I'm going to let him, I'm going to let him have it. Yeah, that's cool. I think, I think that's reasonable. I think that's fair enough. But I, I adore Tom and, and again, you give back and, and, I had this great wealth of mentorship from these public servants, and uh-huh. that's why every summer, I mean, this summer I had 50 interns in my legislative office, and people ask, you know, they joke that I run the cheapest summer camp in Nassau County, <laughs> um, but the reason I have an internship of 50 and it takes so much time and effort is, uh-huh. how can I not give back and break down the barriers of entry to public service when people did it for me? How can I not do it? Because when you climb the ladder and you get to the top, you reach back down and you pull people You're up. You're really opening doors I, for the people who would like to follow in the footsteps of well, giants. It's it's important because, again, how, you know, it's I, I often joke when, when somebody's hesitant to vote for a young person, I said, well, how much worse could they do compared to the incumbents nationwide? I mean, it's not as if, uh, you know, you know, experience directly translates in, into efficacy. I mean... Uh, at the local level, you know, our roads, our roads don't get paved, and and, yeah. and, and the plowing is, is is oftentimes abysmal. And then right. you look at on the national level, and um, you know, Republicans and Democrats can't can't speak to each other, let right, alone right. hammer out policy differences. And young people, that that's that's what's interesting. So we're the largest, most diverse, and most educated generation ever. Mm-hmm. Yet we're the most underrepresented demographic in politics today. So. Yeah, we deserve a seat at the table. And <laughs> what I say is if there isn't a chair at the table, then it's my job to pull one up for someone. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much for doing that. That's, uh, wow, 50 interns. Sure. And then I'm, we're going to have a campaign. I'm running for re-election this, this year. So our summer internship program for the campaign, I hope to be just as big. Because, again, uh, there's no better place to gain an understanding of politics and on a campaign where you're knocking yes. on doors and on the phone and you're in the campaign yes. office eating pizza and, you know, it's a high <laughs> fa- high pace environment. And I, I, I loved it. Uh, so your current position, you are now a Nassau County legislator. I represent the 18th district. And when did you decide that you were going to make the jump from um, school district to a county legislator? Sure. So I was at Harvard. I was in a one-year master's for education policy. And I got a Newsday alert on my phone that our town supervisor and our county executive were under indictment. And oh, I, right. You, yes. You know, <laughs> which, yeah. which, which, you know, everyone can recall. And, and what I said was... Um, the fact that people have lost faith in the integrity of their public servants um, is is a breakdown of our democracy because when when it gets harder and harder to live on Long Island and people feel that their tax dollars aren't going to the right place, mm-hmm. we're eroding the public's trust, mm-hmm. which is such an insidious and, and dangerous phenomenon where people don't trust that their government will work on their behalf. So again, similar to when I was 18, I said, who better? Right? I said, <laughs> one, 1.3 million people in Nassau County, yes. not one millennial. Who yeah. better to represent a generation that's fleeing Long Island because they can't afford to live here? Right, right. The millennial generation has been hit hardest by the opioid crisis. Yeah. Not one millennial to fight to totally transform how young people get access to treatment and how government reaches out with those treatment services. Right, right. right. So, you know, and, and again, you know, who, who better than, than, than someone who, who, who lives in a community that didn't have a representative from, for, you know, from this area to fight right, um, right. when I felt that other parts of the county uh, had better representation. Right. So I decided to run. And again, the first thing I did was I said, how can I get youth involved in this campaign? And we had an, an internship program of 50 high school and college kids. Our average age was 16. And it was magical because so many times, the you know, the rule on the internship program was no one gets coffee um, because so many times young people get put down and, they, and they're told that they're only good to wait by the phone and answer yeah. if it rings. Yes. Or they're told that you can only, uh, you know, pay, pay, paperclip and, and, and staple. These young people that work for me extraordinary yeah they had a social media team where they were doing social media advertising there was an event team where they were planning my calendar and my event schedule there was a constituent services team focusing on uh you know remediating issues in the community i mean these these kids were teenagers yeah but i, I never looked at them as anything less than equal i like that i like that no no one nobody gets no one gets coffee no one gets coffee that that's because that's usually what an internship is, such you know. A the, derogatory thing. It is, of, yeah. You're only good to do basic chores, and these young people who are brilliant, if you give them the patience and the time to let them explore their passions, and 
they knocked 23,000 doors. And I would not have won without them. I am very, very open about that. that That's without incredible. These kids, I would not have won. So uh, backtracking a bit. Um, so you mentioned that you uh, you graduated from Harvard. I did. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, when you were on the school board, though. Yes, I, I started, and, and I'm proud. So I, I did a master's at Harvard. I did a bachelor's at Cornell, but I actually started at Nassau Community College. And Which I'm, is a fantastic community college. I'm so proud of that story. So I got elected to the school board at 18, and I promised the voters I'd stay home for at least two years because, again, this, you know, I was the first one to ever do it in Sayasa. The right. specter of electing a teenager was, was, was scary to some. Right. But I had to promise them that I would be home for two years to give this my all and yeah. uh, the entire consumption of my attention. So I went to Nassau Community College and the Honors Program, uh, and it was the the most wonderful experience. I mean, I studied uh, the, the 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 dichotomies in the subjects that I studied. I studied uh, geology. I studied astronomy. Mm-hmm. I studied uh, you know the global south, and I studied persuasive speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, I studied art history. Yeah. And so my knowledge and and the depth of my knowledge in different categories was so much broader than my friends who had to only pick their specific requirements for their specific majors. Right. And the teachers at Nassau went so out of their way to make sure you had the extra help and attention that you needed where I came out after two years well prepared to exceed uh, and and contribute to the Cornell community. And I don't think I would have done as well at Cornell or at Harvard without that time in Nassau. And I love telling that story that Nassau to Harvard is real and yeah. can be replicated. Yes. Yes, that is um that is uh very impressive and I think really important uh to, you know, when talking about investing in um community colleges. It's crucial, right? So three thousand dollars and change is the national average for a community college. I think it was something like thirty three thousand is the mm-hmm. national average for a private college. And again, uh, you know, going to community college allowed me to graduate college with no debt. Um, you know, we see young people shackling themselves with hundreds of thousands of dollars because it's so difficult to, to graduate from college. But community college is an excellent choice. And it's an excellent choice regardless of your socioeconomic status. It's an excellent choice regardless of your GPA. I told you, um, you know, I told you because I, I know we spoke about my TED talk that. Right. Yes. Um, that's what, that was actually yeah. the next thing I was going to mention. Sure. And, and I did a TED talk called Community College to Harvard. It's got 33,000 views because I feel that at so many of these elite schools like Syosset, mm-hmm. there's either an omission of information intentionally mm-hmm. because, you know, schools, you know, don't want their kids going to community college or you're told, like I was told that if you go to community college, you did something wrong. Right. What's the joke at Syosset uh, that you go to NKK because the kids can't spell Nassau Community College? Well, let me tell you, because really, because I take such offense because so many of my the most brilliant colleagues I've had were at community college, and whether they were kids from from areas where they simply could not afford, uh, you know, you know, a, a a a different college alternative, or they were kids like me who intentionally chose to go to community college. Five of my closest friends at Cornell came from community college. My friend Ryan is doing a master's at Oxford, studying wow. at Pasadena Community College. Yeah. So you know, you know, a you know, how how dare anybody, yeah. uh, you know, put down somebody else for for their collegiate choice? But B, that's true. People should take pride, mm-hmm. and I'm prideful that I went to community college, and no one should ever feel anything less than pride that they go to community college. Agreed. Absolutely fantastic. So would you like to talk a little bit about um, what you're working on right now? Sure. So obviously I'm incredibly passionate about the opioid epidemic. Yes. We've lost 62,000 people in 2016 to substance abuse. To put that into perspective, that's a Vietnam War every single year. And they're all completely preventable because substance abuse is a disease and we can beat this disease yeah. like any other where you diagnose the root causes and you prescribe solutions. So what I'm focused on in Nassau County is how can we make sure that young people have access to treatment and to make sure that government is connecting with those young people. So I passed two laws that I think are, are truly landmark in Nassau. Uh, first and foremost, we passed Timothy's Law. Now, I named this after Timothy Kroll who lost his life in 2009 to heroin addiction. Uh, his doctor was convicted of illegal sale of prescription drugs. Oh, um, wow. And, and, and Timothy, up until, you know, his, his last moments was a hero testifying against that doctor. And his mom, yeah. Terry, is my, my, my personal hero. Instead, you know, she, t- she turned her un- unfathomable grief into advocacy, has trained thousands of students and parents across Long Island, was the one of the very first civilians to be trained in the use of Narcan or Naloxone. And I wanted to honor her and honor her son. So Timothy's law establishes a 24-hour hotline 
dedicated specifically to substance abuse, where now anybody can call the hotline 24-7 uh, and, and get a certified substance abuse counselor on the other end. And more importantly, kids can actually text that hotline too. That should be up and running by Christmas, number one. And number two was a substance abuse app on your smartphone. I joke when I talk to parents, I say, how many of your kids under the age of 18 have ever made a phone call? And you hear crickets <laughs> because, you know, we, you know young, young people don't make phone calls, but we have to reach them where they are, and we know they're on their smartphones. So this app you'll be, ha, will have a zip code searchable database of treatment centers where you can put in your zip code and actually see where the nearest treatment centers are. It'll have information on addiction, but more importantly, you can text the app through the hotline. So, again, we're breaking down the barriers. That's extremely user-friendly. Well, it's important, and, and, and this is where I bring my millennial background, because yeah. I know that in 2018, it's still harder to get help than it is to get heroin. And until that phenomenon reverses itself, we're never going to make progress. Right. So how can we make it easiest to get help for someone who needs to get help, especially when there's a stigma yeah. about seeking help? Yeah. And we need to break down that stigma. So those two, actually both of those items were uh, paid for via asset forfeiture money. So our police commissioners, my closest colleague in government, is taking money from the dealers, putting it back into treatment. So these two items, which are truly revolutionizing the way young people will access treatment, aren't costing the taxpayer a, a, a dime. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's wonderful to work with people who really care, like the police commissioner and my colleague, Laura Schaefer, mm -hmm. who helped co-sponsor these bills, and all my colleagues voted unanimously for these bills. That's fantastic. Josh, mm -hmm. um, I really uh, – can I call you Josh? Absolutely. <laughs> no, I, 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 was... I only go by Josh. When I hear Joshua, my mother's angry at me, <laughs> and Mr. Lafazan, I know someone's messing with me. Uh, I, uh, you know, Josh, uh, uh, legislator Lafazan, thank you so much for – giving back to the sure. community for continuing your efforts to run and to push for more for not just Syosset, but for all of Long Island. And um, we really appreciate you coming to sit down with us on this podcast. It's my pleasure and I look forward to being back. Welcome again uh, to Syosset's own Josh Lafazan. We hope to have you back after your next victory. I, I hope so. <laughs> give, give me a year and uh, I... We'll always make time uh, to show up for the community that has given me everything. Wonderful. Thanks again. And we are going to close this chapter of Turn, Turn the, the page. page. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode. <laughs>